Crisco for you too. Have I got a treat for you today. I'm going to be making crock pot beef stew. Yes, this is going to be what you're going to need. We're getting ready to move into the end of fall and now it's getting cooler outside. So I thought this was the perfect time in order to make this. And this is a meal that carries very low maintenance. Only thing you have to do is braise off your meat, then put everything in the crock pot. You can leave it for the next six to eight hours. Six hours if you're going to cook it on high. Eight hours if you're going to cook it on low, which means that by the time you finish out your day and get in, it'll be time for you to have your dinner and it will be prepared. So let's get started with the ingredients that you're going to need to make this delicious soup. Here, I, stew, I'm sorry. Here I have 22 ounces of tomato and 22 ounces of mushroom soup. We're going to use all of that. Now, you won't need as much because your ingredients will be smaller, and I'll have them listed at the bottom of the video, but I'm making a larger amount, so I'm just showing you ingredients. I'm not giving you measurements right now. You're going to need Lipton onion soup mix. You'll only need one packet, but I'm going to be using two. You're going to need some potatoes. It's best if you have Yukon Gold. I didn't have Yukon Gold. I had russets. They'll serve the same purpose. Carrots. If you have the longer carrots, you can use them and just cut them up. I had the smaller one, so I'm going to go with that. Green peas. This is two and a half tablespoons of flour. I'm going to add to that two cups of water. You have your onion and your celery, which I'm going to go away and cut up. And I have three packets of this boneless beef stew meat. You won't need that. You'll probably just need two packets of it. But I'm going to have to, the hardest part of the menu is to braise or the meal is to braise this meat. And I'm going to do that at the stove. Then we'll come back and we'll put all of the other ingredients in the crock pot and it'll be set. I do have season all out here and the reason for that is if you need a little bit of extra seasoning, the season all would be the best to use. So I'm going to go away, get my meat ready to braise it on the stove. I'm going to chop up my onion and do the same thing with my celery and I'll meet you at the stove. Right okay, there. now I'm at the stove and I'm getting ready to braise off this meat. And what I normally use is just some old cooking oil. And I think I've told you guys before that this is just my leftover chicken grease, pork chop grease, whatever it is that I've fried in. I'm going to use that because you really don't need a lot of it. I just need enough to really kind of coat the bottom of the pan. If you had like... Um, I guess three tablespoons of that would be fine. Now I'm going to take my meat and put it in here. What I'm really trying to do is to brown my meat on all sides. Now that's going to take roughly maybe about four minutes to get this browned. And like I told you, you won't be using as much meat as I am using because I'm making quite a bit of it. So, I want to make certain that I get all of my meat in and I get it browned on all four sides. And that's going to be the hardest part of this crock pot stew. Now, you can um, season to taste if you really want to. You may not need any seasonings to it. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit um, of it as this cooks. I want to get that off my hands real quick. Turn up my stove just a little bit. Now, to this, I'm going to add just a little bit of seasoning. And like I said, you really won't need that. You may not, but you can taste yours. If you want to season your meat, you can. But that tomato soup and that mushroom soup may be all that you're going to need. Okay, now I'm going to cook this, sit here in front of the, well, I'm going to be here at the stove and I'm going to cook this for a little while. And then once it browns on all four sides, I'm going to bring you back in. Now halfway through this process, then I'm going to add, I have my chopped up celery and onions here. And it's sitting on top of my crock pot. I want to make certain that my stove is, is on. Well, it would help if I would turn on the right one. Okay. 
Yeah, so far with me just getting ready to come up and do something. I had the back, um, the back one on, and then I decided I wanted to use the front one. So now I'm using the front one. Just a moment, I gotta get this right. Okay, I think I just did. I'm gonna start to come up in a minute. There it is. Okay, now, flame is coming up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, like I said, brown this meat here. I'm gonna add that about halfway through, and I'll bring it back in. So I'm gonna let my stove come up to temperature and um, let this meat brown. I'll bring you back in when I get ready to add those onions. Be right okay, back. Okay, now we're back, and my meat is almost brown on all four sides, and now I'm going to go ahead and add my onions and my celery that I chopped up. I don't want it to be raw going into my stew, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in now, and I'm going to saute this for roughly about one more minute. Okay. It'll be about a minute just to give those those onions and the green peppers just a little time to kind of cook up and to give my meat a chance to really kind of turn brown on that last side. Any little pieces that I see are not brown, like for instance this one right here, then I'll just flip it so it can get brown while the rest of my uh, ingredients are going ahead and sauteing up. So I'll be right back in a few minutes. Okay, now I'm back. All of my meat appeared to have browned up. So what I'm going to do, now remember this is not cooked. Okay, it's just brown. I'm going to cut my stove off. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to transfer this meat over into my crock pot. Now remember, you cannot eat this meat now. It was not done. The only thing I wanted to do was to get some color to the meat, which I was able to do. So I'm going to transfer all of the meat into the crock pot so that I can add everything else that I need to add to this. And that's it. This was the hard part. The hard part was just browning the meat up. And it didn't take very long. It took me about, I don't know, maybe about five, six minutes just to get it brown. If your stove is hot enough, and if you remember when I started out, uh, I had to cut my stove up again, but if your stove is hot enough, and if your oils are hot enough, you can go ahead and get that meat browned up real quick. So I'm going to get all of these meat, all of this meat, um, added to this crock pot, and then I'll meet you at my sink. Be right back. Okay, now I'm back, and all of my beef is into the crock pot and now I'm going to go ahead and add in my carrots I'm going to go ahead and add in my potatoes I'm going to add in a can of tomato soup to get it all every bit of it out of here can of cream of mushroom soup. Okay, I've got all of that in. Now I'm going to add in Remember the flour, um, I told you I had two and a half teaspoons, I'm sorry, tablespoons of flour. Mixing it with two cups of water. That's one cup of water and the flour. And instead of using a second cup of water, I had some beef broth in my refrigerator. So, I'm going to make the second cup of water be just the beef broth. Make 
Make sure I stir up all that flour real good. Okay, I got that in. Last but not least, my favorite seasoning in the world, Lipton Onion Soup Mix. And because the tomato and the mushroom and the Lipton Onion Soup Mix have um, salt in it, you shouldn't need any salt. But if you do, you can always at the end, you know, salt it to taste. Now that's all you need to do. Then I'm going to cut my crock pot on low. And I'm going to cook this for the next 7 to 8 hours. Okay? You don't need to stir it. Not right now. Okay? So I'm just going to put the top on this. Let it cook. And I'll get back to you in six to eight hours so you can see how this delicious soup worked out. Be back. Okay, remember this, uh, I did not stir it and it has been cooking about four hours now. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna stir it. And it's already, if you can look at it, you can see that it's already trying to develop its own gravy. So I have this on high. So I'm cooking a roughly about another two to two and a half hours. Okay, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. See? It's grazing up real, real good. To really look like beef stew. And I didn't put in the peas yet. So I'm going to wait about another hour. I'll bring you back when I get ready to put in the peas. Be back. Okay, we're back and we're about, I don't know, probably about 45 minutes from the completion of this stew. Look at that. I'll go ahead and put these peas in. Because peas don't really take a long time to cook, so... I want you to see, look at how thick it is and how rich it is. We got our meat, carrots, onions, potatoes, and of course the peas. But the soup is on, I mean, sorry, the stew is on point. All righty, 45 minutes, I'll be back and dish you up a plate. Back. Okay, now we're back. It's roughly seven and a half hours. This stew is ready. I want to dish you up a bowl. Look at that. This is everything that you would hope beef stew would be. It's thick. It's creamy. I mean, it's full of beef, potatoes, carrots. meat of course you got to try this man I think you're going to love it you have got to try it okay and there's your bowl of beef stew ready for that hearty day come in long day don't feel like cooking this is all done Okay, that's what we have for you today. Chris is making beef stew. And as always, thank you for watching. Chris cooked for you too. Bye.